So Scott used the twin lock system on both their Spark and the Genius I've got here today. And this is a remote system. So it's all come from a bar remote. There's no reaching down to touch your shocks at all with this. So you can see it mounts on the left-hand side. That space does come at a bit of a premium these days. You can see how it's really neatly done. Got two levers for the twin lock and then my dropper seat post is on the very same mount. So this is the new Scott Genius. That actually, it's been out a little while now, but it uses the same frame layout as the Scott Spark. So you've got the vertical shock and actually the cable that comes to the rear shock is all internally rooted. So it literally just pops out the frame at the bottom by the shock to keep everything nice and tidy. Now, one of the big features of the twin lock system is that it's bar mounted. So you can use those levers all the time, just like a dropper seat post. Now that is a big advantage over trying to reach down and flick a lever on your shock. In that case, I'll probably only use it for a big climb and then turn it off for descending. Of course, the disadvantage of having it on the bar is that you have to add more cables, but with a bit of simple thought, you can tidy those up. So the twin knot lever runs two cables. One goes to the fork, the other to the shock. And this is a Fox nude shock that is designed specifically for Scott. And this runs the dual piston system, a bit of a mouthful, but this is the key component for the twin lock really, and let me explain why. So the first push of the lever takes you from descend mode into traction control. So that uses that dual piston system on that rear shock and actually closes off one chamber. So that reduces the travel on the Genius. It goes from a 150 bike down to a 110 straight away. It also makes that shock more progressive. So it still means you've got a sensitive shock, which is great for traction when you're pedaling, but also the geometry of the bike changes. So the bike will now sit higher. The BB stays higher, which means you've got better pedal clearance, which is needed for those technical climbs where you might be trying to pedal over obstacles, but also the seat angle stays steeper. So it puts you in that more comfortable position, stay on the front of the saddle and actually more efficient for pedaling as well. At the same time, compression damping is added to the fork to mean the bike still feels balanced. So the interesting point here is that the twin lock has now affected the air spring curve, but also the damping. And that makes it feel like a 110mm bike that performs properly, not like a 150mm bike that's just been restricted. One more push on the lever takes you into full lockout mode, which completely locks out both the front and rear of the bike, which is great for tarmac climbs or the smoothest pyro climbs, super efficient climbing. It's got to be worth saying that actually on something that's a little bit rougher, so even on fire roads, it's sometimes worth having it in trash control. So you've got that bit of sensitivity from the suspension, so that's going to help your forward motion, but also it really helps traction. So my normal riding, I kind of ride downhill stages and then wind myself back up the fire roads, sort of enduro style riding, and I will use full lockout for those climbs. But if it's a bit more single tracky going back up, I'll definitely leave it in traction control. So I made it to the top of the hill. I can flick that lever and what it does, is it opens up that chamber into a large volume shock again, puts me back in my 150 travel mode. So I think that just proves how versatile a lot of mountain bikes can be nowadays. Got carbon components, carbon frame, big wide range cassette. It's easy enough to climb, but also it's very versatile. It can go downhill very well. Traction control isn't all about the climbing. It's nice to have a shorter travel, stiffer bike, when it comes to pumping parts of the terrain, but also for hitting jumps. So it's really interesting to take a detailed look at what goes on inside the shock to make this twin lock system work, but also just how versatile it makes those bikes. Interesting to note that actually Scott recorded Nino Schurter with a GoPro, see how many times he used his on his Spark RC, and he used it 160 times in one lap. He spent about 50% in traction control, 30 in descend or open, and then 20% in full lockout. 
Whilst other suspension manufacturers intend their suspension to be adjusted for a climb or after a climb, Scott's bar-mounted actuation allows multiple uses on the fly. So they're really intending for you to adjust your suspension with ease for the trains in front of you, no matter what it is, without losing control of your bike. If you want to check out some related videos whilst we're here, click up there for the first look at this very bike, the Scott Genius. Click down there for a pro bike with Nino Schurter. Hit subscribe button if you haven't done already and give us a thumbs up.